what's interesting to me, and I, I think would be right. I'm just while you're talking, I'm totally just trying to put myself in your shoes. Cause for one, I think what you do is super interesting. Um, but what do you think you kind of have a yin and yang of, you know, for yourself, not only learning kind of what the, your clients want, right. But also, so you have, you have one side of yourself and kind of what you want to do, I would imagine is all right, setting those goals, setting, Hey, maybe this is what we should shoot for. And then you have the other side is, you know, maybe encouraging and, and kind of helping with setting those expectations for your clients. Is that, is it, is that kind of a different yin and yang for you? Like, is it, you know what I mean? It's, Hey, I think we should, I think we can get you here and I think we should maybe do this, but you know, I'm sure you get people that are just fired up and want that want results tomorrow. And you have some people that maybe, Oh, I don't know if we can do that. You know, maybe down on themselves. Is it super hard to kind of manage other people's expectations? It's a, yeah. Oh gosh, of course. Um, Mm -hmm. You're always delivering polarizing news right? When you do analysis on people's financial data, which is a huge part of what we do, of course, like I've talked so much about behavior and mental space and uh, decision making and all the kind of stuff that's more tactile. But like, in the end, like numbers do tell a lot of the story when it comes to people's financial plans. So when Mm -hmm. you reveal those numbers to them, which is the, you know, the first part of our process after we get organized and gather information, then we review, okay, here's where you're tracking towards unmodified, Mm -hmm. you know, not glossy. Here's what it looks like. And for some people Mm -hmm. it's super exciting. It's like, Mm -hmm. Oh, we are actually on track for our long-term goals. And there's this huge wash of relief that comes Mm -hmm. over people. And then it becomes about just tweaking things for efficiency and for lifestyle enhancement. Right. Mm -hmm. But for many, many people, what we're revealing is depressing news. It's you're (laughs) behind off track. You need to change your past behavior has led you to a bad place. Like there's nice ways of saying all of that stuff that are kind of winning right. in, in yeah. terms of relationship. But in the end, if people need to change to get to where they want to go, only t- one of two things are going to happen. And this is what you realize over time. Number mm-hmm. one, that that kind of negative reinforcement is going to encourage positive change or hmm. they don't really believe the information and they're not mm-hmm. going to change. Right. Which is a, which is a nice way of saying they probably shouldn't have asked in the first place for help because right. they weren't yeah. ready for it. Right. Hmm. Very mm-hmm. great analogy would be like choosing to work with a personal trainer or not right, right. for your health. There are a lot of people who would obviously benefit from working with a personal trainer, myself mm-hmm. included. Right. <laughs> but are not in a yeah. but are not in a space where they're ready for the sacrifice involved with that because there's going to be sure. accountability that's going to come along with that and a process that is outside yeah. of yourself here and yeah. in your heart right mm-hmm. that you're going to have to kind of conform to if it's going to work sure. and so that's the most important question people ask or should ask themselves mm-hmm. when it comes to personal finance is would I benefit or do I want to have an outside voice in my life helping Mm -hmm. me make these decisions? And that yes or no question should be asked by every single person who's listening to this or every single person that you know, because the way you answer that question will then shape the way you run your financial plan for the rest of your life, whether you're going to have outside help like an advisor or Mm -hmm. not. And right then what path you take forward from there, you can succeed either way, but the path you Mm -hmm. take forward from there is going to be greatly influenced by one pretty simple question, which takes a lot of humility Mm -hmm. to answer, right? We, the way we say it all the time for our team is we think the people that voluntarily reach out to us to ask for help with their money, Mm -hmm. it's heroic, right? It's embarrassing to admit I can't, do it on my own. I can't manage right. my money on my own. I need some help. I'm raising my hand and mm-hmm. asking for help. That is the most difficult thing people do. And from that point moving forward, it's usually better and better and better and better. But mm-hmm. that first thing is really hard to do. Right. And of course it, it is. So it sounds like, um, you know, especially with the personal trainer example, no matter how good a job you personally do as a financial advisor, there is still a lot of responsibility on your client, on the individual, right? 
when you first started off as a financial advisor, was that difficult? And sometimes I would say maybe frustrating in the sense of you would put in everything you have, right? You're throwing every, all the knowledge, all the time in the world, trying to help this client and they are just not doing the work themselves or at least, you know, even the basics, you know, was it hard to kind of, maybe you had to learn your expectations and also kind of maybe, you know, accepting the fact of like, look, I've done all I can do. It's not my fault. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, for sure. Right. And I mean, we all, anybody who does anything with a sense of pride is going to take things harder than they probably should when they don't go the way you want them to go. Sure. That's, that's uh, of course, true of our business as well. What I will say, though, is you learn to read people Mm -hmm. very quickly. Right. (laughs) Over time. And that's as you roll your eyes. Yeah. Well, but, but, but that the thing is, and that's not, that's not, that's not to speak ill of people. I mean, but what you, what you figure out is that there is a way of identifying the type of person that is going to get a lot of value out of the conversation and the type of person who is only doing it because either someone else is creating their priorities for them or because they're doing it out of desperation, but they don't really want to do it. And that's, you know, different categories of people. Sure. But the way you approach the conversations then with those different subsets of people is going to be greatly shaped by your initial interactions, right? So Mm -hmm. the thing you have to get over early in in your career, and I think this is with almost anything, but certainly for ours, I'll speak to mine only, um, Mm -hmm. is your idealized version of the best and right thing you can do for every single person is almost never going to happen. Interesting. Right? So like okay. if I was in your shoes, what I would do is this is yeah. a good way of delivering information because it's a very kind of non-threatening conversation. And then people get to make their own decision based on your opinions and the data and the evidence of what you're presenting to them. But mm-hmm. you, are, no matter what, you are not that person, right? So the way they're going to respond and behave and most importantly, how their decision making is going to be impacted over the long term is completely mm-hmm. and totally in their hands. Like the, the, the saying I always use in client meetings is I can't go to the grocery store with you and choose the store brand soup instead of the Campbell's right. and save 40 cents, right? Like mm-hmm. you have to choose to do that and then do it consistently. Like if it's a budgeting situation, right? Sure. I, if you're not going to give it the effort and the discipline and or the time and mental energy We can only Mm -hmm. do so much from the outside in, and we can still do a lot. There is still positive impact that can happen, but the expectations Mm -hmm. both externally and most Mm -hmm. importantly, internally for us have to be correctly Mm -hmm. aligned. And that's how you get Mm -hmm. into a spot where you're not depressed (laughs) every day working and as, but actually the opposite of that, where you're kind of the most hopeful person that people interact Mm -hmm. with every day, right? Like throughout their life, most people, money is a super negative topic, right? Now for 10 or 15% of people, it's super cool to talk about because they're doing well, they're managing it. And they honestly kind of like bragging about it, you know, to their close (laughs) friends, right? Sure. Yeah. Which is fine. That's fine. I'm probably in that. I'm well, not probably, I'm definitely in that camp, but I'm like an advocate, Mm -hmm. right? So I justify it. (laughs) Right. Um, But (laughs) But for most people, talking about money is like the worst possible thing they can talk about because it's baggage and guilt and shame Mm -hmm. and fear. And so if you can be the one person that is creating hope for Mm -hmm. people in something that's normally an awful thing to talk about, then it's encouraging. At minimum, it becomes not bad to talk about with this person and I can make some positive change. And at Mm -hmm. best you can be the spark that lights the fire that changes their life, which of course, mm-hmm. when that happens, it's like crack. I mean, it's just, right. you know, yeah, yeah. the most amazing no. feeling that you can have. Yeah. That progress is addicting for sure. If you enjoyed this content, be sure to check out the standing still podcast, both here on YouTube and wherever else you listen to podcasts.